logically I get it, right? You're sitting on the toilet flipping through your Instagram and you're like, huh. So I just put 30 grand down, I'll get the car and you'll rent it out until it's paid off and then I get the car. Yeah, it'll have 30,000 miles on it, 40,000 miles on it, but I'll get a free Lambo just because I'm putting 30 grand down and it doesn't work like that. What's going on everybody? Rob Ferretti here and today I want to talk about what is considered exotic car automation because it's starting to get a little bit more popular or at least people are pushing it a lot more and there's a lot of pitfalls there that they're not telling you. Brandon Condi here and today I'm super excited to break down what is exotic car automation. In this video that means that you want to start earning money passively in the luxury car rental space. I've created passive income from these exotic rentals for so many families in so many years. I want to show you exactly how I've done it. Exactly how I went from making three to four K a month to now making over a hundred thousand dollars every single month while living my best life. I have the cars, I have the watches, I have everything but free time to enjoy it. This is exactly what our investors get. When they join us within our program, they get access to these luxury vehicles that they get to enjoy at the same time that they earn passive income from them. So if you guys are interested in getting cars like these, running out for cash and profit every single month, come with the word passive income below. My team will be reaching out. Let's freaking go to you guys. Before you guys fall for a trap like this, it's important to identify what you're signing up for, why it exists, and then ultimately, is it worth doing for you or not? There's no shortage of guys on, on the internet or on TikTok or Instagram that are popping up in your feed and saying, hey, we got a way for you to make money without doing anything. And, and people love passive income, right? Passive income is terrific. So what is exotic car automation? Well, it's somebody taking your asset or selling you an asset that you're then responsible for and they're gonna take care of everything. They're gonna rent it out for you and they're just gonna send you checks and split the profit with you. Now, why would they do that, right? Because for them, they don't have to buy any cars. Now, what is the biggest challenge that you're gonna have as an exotic car rental company? Because there's a lot of issues that you have with an exotic car rental company. The number one issue you're gonna have is insurance. And the reason is because there's so much risk involving the vehicles. Now he's getting the cars without having all of the risk. And the risk ends up being passed on to the guy who's paying for the automation. Now, there was this guy, and this is where I, I first was not triggered, but this is, this is the video I saw where I'm like, all right, slow down. Exotic, not using your resources. We're gonna take your car, we're gonna bring it down to Miami. We're gonna max out your calendar and we're gonna be achieving an average of 86% occupancy, which we are seeing today across all of our 50 cars that we are managing. If you're sitting on some nice car in your home and you wanna make some passive income, we will manage your vehicle down here in Miami in the hottest city on the planet currently, where rentals are going through the roof and you're gonna be making at least $5,000 in complete net profit every single month without having to lift a finger while your asset is getting paid up. If this sounds interesting to you, you wanna know more info, send me a DM Exotics. Come on, man, let's cash flow that vehicle. Don't let it sit in the garage. See you at the winning side. DM me Exotics. This is not representing things properly. You always have the same pitch, right? Lofty claims of super high utilization, free money, don't do anything, hands off. Like, why would you not do it, right? You got a car sitting in your driveway, I'm gonna give you thousands of dollars a month, we're gonna split the money, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. But they don't tell you about all the risk. Now, can you run a car through somebody else managing it and ultimately make out? Possibly, but the, the percentage of that happening or the, the percentile that you're looking at of everything going smoothly over time, it's probably not gonna be worth it because a lot of the times you're gonna have issues and when you have issues, the burden falls on you, right? Let's give you some examples. If, if you look at some of these contracts, all of the downside of renting these cars, and you see me do it all the time, when that car gets crashed and it's out for seven months, there's no profit, right? Seven months of you now being responsible for the payments, right? Just say, and these guys package it, right? There's guys that'll be like, look, we just need you to use your credit, 
and we'll get you the cars. We own the leasing company. We are the rental company and also the management company. So uh, in essence, they all know about each other. And in the lease that we write for the cars, we say, hey, you're able to legally uh, rent this vehicle out. And then the insurance company will give the, well, it's together, so we insure the vehicles. And so you're now responsible for the payments on the cars. You've got to throw them twenty, fifty, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 as a down payment on something. So you've got a lot of cash tied up in this, but they're getting all the upside. You're, you're fronting the capital for the car. You're taking responsibility for the payments. And sure, when it's rented out, sometimes you'll get a couple of bucks back. Maybe your payment's four grand a month. You're getting back seven. Awesome, right? But when the car doesn't go out, you still got that $4,000 a month payment. You still have the $80,000 you laid out to put a down payment on the car. So there's all these costs that they're gonna be pulling out. Maybe they send you an invoice, right? They don't tell you that. Like, hey, if your car doesn't go out for the month or if that car gets crashed and it's out for seven months, they're gonna handle the insurance claim, not you. You've got no part in this. They're gonna handle the insurance claim. They're gonna handle everything and you are responsible for the payment. So now you've got to send them the $4,000 a month every month and you've got to pay for probably whatever insurance they're lumping in and you're sort of sitting there holding the bag. So now you may go seven months without getting a dollar in revenue and you're incurring $30,000 in costs. They don't advertise that. Why would they want to use your credit or your car? Because then they don't have to burden the risk. All they're doing is everything that they touch makes money, right? They're gonna manage your car, but you have to pay the garaging fee comes off the top, the transport, the, the fueling, the washing, all of that stuff comes off the top and they split the profit with you. So it's not gross numbers. It's not like the car generated $20,000 or $12,000. So here's six or here's 10. They don't do that. They say, here is your check because the car went out minus, 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 minus. Here was the net number. Here's half of that. And the problem you're going to run into is anything that's an actual expense. Just use this car for an example. Car gets in an accident. You know, there's loss of use and diminished value. They're in the contract that they get that, right? They're, they're entitled to go for it. So they're going to go as the rental company, go after an insurance company, go after whoever, say they get $60,000 in loss of use. They keep it. Maybe they'll give you 10%. Read the fine print. Like they are loss of use means you're still incurring all of your payments for the months, right? You're incurring the seven months of payments on that car while it was down and you're paying $30,000 out of pocket. Just say they settle for $50,000 in loss of use. They'll give you five. They'll keep 45 for not losing any revenue, they just get all of that money. Diminished value means your car, now that it's got an accident on it, is worth less. Just say that car was $250,000 with the accident, maybe it's 220, that's another $30,000. Say they collect $30,000 in diminished value. They give you three and they keep 27. Because your asset is worth less, they're keeping 27. So they're getting all the money, no matter what they touch, where they go, they're gonna offer you the financing, right? Hey, so no matter what, they're getting the money, uh, they're getting, you're paying them interest on the assets. It's not even like they're saying, you lay out the money, 0% financing on the loan or whatever, like they're making money on the financing, they're charging you for the insurance, whatever that insurance expense is, and I guarantee if their insurance expense is $500 a month, they're charging you 700. So they're, they're making money on the insurance, they're making money on any transaction that takes place, they're making money on the leasing you the car if you don't own the car, and you're getting whatever they decide to give you in the end. So exotic car automation is a terrible idea because if you think about it, if they're saying, oh, we're gonna give you five grand a month, that's great. Why would they give you $5,000 a month on a car if they've got 50 cars with 86% utilization, which isn't possible, they've got all these cars going on all the time, why would they give you $5,000 a month or more when what they can do is just go out and get the same car for $3,000 a month? Why are they giving out all this money? It makes no sense. Nobody thinks about this. So exotic car automation, you're seeing it pop up more in different ways, shapes, or forms. Read the fine print. If you want to send me your contract, I'll highlight that shit for you. You send it over to me. I'll look at the contract. I'll show you every way that things can go wrong or they're ripping you off and it's a bad deal and you're going to think twice. Logically, I get it, right? You're sitting on the toilet flipping through your Instagram and you're like, huh. So I just put 30 grand down. I'll get the car and you'll rent it out until it's paid off and then I get the car. Yeah, it'll have 30,000 miles on it, 40,000 miles on it, but I'll get a free Lambo just because I'm putting 30 grand down and it doesn't work like that. You have to go 
four, three or four years or five years even with one asset, which if it survives that whole time with no hiccups, if the engine goes on your car, $45,000 out of pocket, guess what? You get nothing. You have to write a check for $45,000. You're going to keep being kicked back when anything goes wrong, diminished value, loss of use, the excess miles. If you're leasing it and you're not reporting it properly, if the car gets stolen, like this is the whole problem why insurance companies don't want to touch this business. If your car gets stolen, that's on you. Now you're responsible for the $250,000 they lent you. There's no car. Even though you didn't rent the car, they rented the car. They did everything they were supposed to do by their contract. They checked the guy's license. Cars get stolen. That's on you. You can't make an insurance claim. The insurance that they're giving you doesn't cover stolen cars. It's a risk of the business. So I can stomach it because I've got 20 cars going out at any point in time. So if somebody steals a car, it sucks, but we, we factor that into our operating expenses that every 10 years, a car may get stolen and there's no coverage on it. If they take your one car, not only are you out the revenue being generated, you're out the car, but you're also out the fact that you have to pay these guys on the asset that's not there and not like, oh, we'll work out a payment plan. The asset's gone. It's now an unsecured loan. Pay me now. And they're, they're going to make you personally guarantee the loans. They're going to go after your personal assets, your retirement accounts, your bank accounts, anything that they can take to satisfy that loan, even though they were managing your car that got stolen or crashed or there's no insurance coverage. Say the car gets crashed, there's no insurance coverage on it, or the, for whatever reason, the company denies it. There's no coverage. You've got nothing. You've got a pile of scrap metal that you're still responsible for and you're upside down in it. So exotic car automation sounds cool in an Instagram reel or a TikTok video. In actuality, it's a whole different animal and you want to think twice before you get involved in it. So if you're thinking about doing any sort of exotic car automation program, send over your contract. I'll tell you the things. If you can get them to sign up and make the deal swing a little bit closer into your favor, you'll be in good shape and you can do whatever you want. It's your money. But I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not automating your cars. I don't want to rent your cars out. If, if it's ever the case, and I offered this last year, I will give a fair deal. But I'm telling you, and everybody that reached out to me, I'm like, look, here's the stuff I just told you is the stuff I'm telling them. And they're like, hey, you know, it's not, not that great of a deal as it, it initially seemed in my head. And that's going to help you not put yourself in a bad position. So Rob Ferretti, again, uh, exotic car automation is, is becoming a thing. It's becoming more pronounced because they're spamming it in front of at least my circles and people are asking me about it. So there is my take. If you're smart, you'll avoid it. If you're still like, you know what, Rob, you make good points, but I still think I'm going to explore this option. I'll help you out for free. I'll, I'll look at your contract. I'll tell you where you're going to get screwed or potentially going to get screwed. And hopefully uh, you can make an informed decision. Thank you for watching. Rob Ferretti, I will see you next time. Be safe out there, and I'm sure you work hard for your money, or I'm assuming you work hard for your money. You don't want to waste it on something that seems like it's too good to be true, because generally when something's too good to be true, it probably is.